Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh! We knocked him off the thing! Yo! Hey, how's it going, guys? It's your retro future boy, Ricky Summer here. And today I've come back in time to take a look at Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden. A ridiculously long name attached to a pretty fantastic game. So this is an RPG with XCOM style combat. Very XCOM style combat. But I would say uh, perhaps more focused. But we'll get into that in a second. Uh, so this is based off, I believe, a tabletop role-playing game originally from the 80s, so you know it's in my wheelhouse. <laughs> uh, it's set in a post-apocalyptic world with like a combination of climate change, uh, like nuclear fallout, and a big old disease that, that killed all the humans. So this is a post-human uh, world, I guess. You know, there are humans running around, but there's also mutants, as you can see here, where, where, where these are our play, um, play characters, I guess. Playable, ca playable characters, that's the term that I will use. They're mutants, and you're fighting a lot of blokes called ghouls, and I'm not really sure what they are, but I think they're another form of mutant. Uh, anyway, so, oh, there's, there's a surprising amount of stuff to explain here. <laughs> Let's just get, recover the important stuff. So you don't have, it's not like XCOM where you have randomly generated soldiers, and I, I love that. It's, it lends a completely different tone to the game. You... Don't think of your soldiers as expendable because they're not. They're characters that are voiced, that there's actual character development and they're cool, you know, they're likable characters. It's a story-driven RPG. Um, now, I'm not sure on a couple details, but it seems like it's, it's possibly going to be mostly linear, uh, maybe with a couple of side areas that you can scooch to. Here's the map. Um, I think this area in particular, I didn't have to go there, but... I did, and I got some loot as a result of it, you know, uh, and the other, only other notable thing here is the Ark, which is like your home zone, where you go back to trade and upgrade your weapons and a few other tidbits, and, and get little, little story beats here and there, you can talk to folks in the Ark. Uh, the voice acting is actually surprisingly good. I would say the, the, the dialogue is perhaps cheesy sometimes, but it's voice acted in a way that I, that I think just really suits the game. All right, so you start off with uh, with Pig Boy here, Borman. <laughs> the names are a little on the nose. And Duck Boy is called Ducks with, a, with an X. And then you, later on you find Selma. Now, I'm not sure if they're going to be more characters. The Like the press material beta play guide thing they gave us suggests that there might be, but it could. It's a little ambiguous. They might also just be referring to the characters that reside in the arc. So I don't know for sure. This is just like the first uh, two, three hours of the game, and these are all the characters that you get. There is itemization. So we can take this stuff off and put it back on. It actually shows on the model, which surprised me a little bit. And I love it, a duck with a, <laughs> with a snazzy visor. 25% added to weapon range. Check this out. So we've got some nice like flavor text here. Military grade tactical visor used in the poker stealth conflict with stylish piece of, this stylish piece of gear rather, reduces glare, granting its wearer a range bonus. <laughs> okay, right? It's It's got a nice little sense of humor here. Uh, okay, so... What was the, what's the what's the gameplay like? What's the gameplay loop? So you go through these areas. Um, they all seem like I don't think there's any uh, procedural generation with the with the maps. They're all they all seem to be set crafted, and, and that's good, you know, because they they're they're really quite detailed and and fun and intriguing to explore. Uh, so you go through these areas uh, looking for scrap and whatnot. There is a slight element of of exploration. I'm not sure how much replay value there is in the game because, you know, the maps are presumably always the same. But there you go, we found a hand grenade. Sometimes you'll find uh, scrap as well, which is the nuts and bolts icon at the top right of the screen. Uh, you'll find artifacts, which you can essentially trade in at the arc for, like, I, I guess you would call them party bonuses. Um, you can find med kits, which you're going to need, buddy. <laughs> it's not an easy game. Uh, and, and broken weapon pieces. And that goes it all goes into the upgrading system. So you've got like, oh man, there's so much here. So two weapons, and then you can like add scopes and modules to them and that kind of stuff. There's also uh, mutations. So it's essentially like uh, leveling up your, your squad little perk points and, 
it seems like everyone's got their own set little thing. So uh, ducks can get moth wings so he can essentially levitate to get some height advantage and that sort of stuff. Uh, Selma seems to be about some kind of plant integration here. So she can control plants and she can also jump quite high. And Borman's just like a big heavy bloke and I'm okay with that. <laughs> okay, enough of that. Let's get into the combat here. Alrighty, so... I really, I really like that it's a much more focused combat experience, you know. Watch out for ghouls on the road. There we go. We got some, we got, I'll try to leave some space to, for you to hear the voice acting here, because I, I really do quite like it. Uh, okay, so we're going to turn off our flashlight here, which means we move slower, but we're also stealthier. So there's, there's definitely a, uh, stealth is very much a big aspect of the game. Did I miss any scrap? Ah, yeah, I did. Come and scrap, scoop me up, daddy. I'm into it. There's some more over here. This is what I'm talking about, man. You know, you got to explore the map. Otherwise, you miss out on some goods. Okay, so uh, here we go. We're going to show off the, the stealth here. I'm going to split up my party, and I'm going to use Selma. Because she's, she's got some stealth strats over here. So, let's ambush. And get ready for it. So, uh, Ducks and Selma start off with silent weapons, which means, for example, we should be able to pick this bloke off without alerting the the rest of the the enemies. You know, uh, so 100% chance to hit over here, 20% chance. I mean, we this is guaranteed. We're gonna take him out. Don't even trip. Forget about it. So. I think we're safe. And now we're back to exploration mode, you know, because no one detected us. I know for a fact that there are enemies on that on that raised section that you can see up ahead there. Um, and there's even a bloke amongst the cars. Actually, I'm going... I, I, <laughs> I know what's going on here, so I'm going to try and play optimally. Let's, I, like to, I like to use Borman as my main, just because he's... I relate to him. He's a, he's a big, gruff boy, and he's ready for action at all times. Just... Just like myself, I see myself in him. Ugly face. You see anything out there? No, there's nothing out there. It's the zone. And stop calling me ugly face. Look at your face. I can't look at my face. It's my face. Now put your eyes out there and look for intruders. <laughs> see what I mean? It's kind of it's kind of cheesy, but uh, I think it works. I mean, from the moment that you're you're playing a bunch of anthropomorphized animals. I think you gotta you gotta forgive some cheesy dialogue here and there, and it's voice acted uh, in a, in a way that, that that really satisfies me. You know. Okay, so long story short, Borman, our pig boy, is kind of by default our up close and personal. Uh, he's like the ranger, or what was it called? The assault, I think, from from enemy. Uh, unknown, I think that's right. He's, he's actually got a, a skill called Run and Gun, and it behaves exactly the way it does in XCOM. And I like that. You know, why reinvent the wheel? We know what Run and Gun means. We know what Overwatch means. Unless those terms are copyrighted, just throw them in there. I'm into it. Okay, so here's our shotgun boy. Uh, we, can, we can actually move in there and not get detected. So let's do it. So the reason I want to take this guy out first is because he's a shaman. He's got, see that, can't really zoom in, there we go. See that big uh, horn on his back? He's got a cool reinforcement. So if we can take him out before he does that, uh, we're going to be partying at least seven to six ways uh, to Sunday. So let me go over the ducks here. It's kind of six and one half dozen vis-a-vis -vis chance to hit. Uh, so let's move ducks over there, and we'll mo move Selma here. And I like that you can move and then switch. You know, it's not like all the, do use all the turns of this character before you get the next one. You know, you can you can move all over the place, and I appreciate that. Okay, so let's try and use our stealth boys here. So you'll notice that we've got a fifty percent chance to hit, and if we hit, we're going to take off the the white section of his health there we have a 20 percent chance to crit and if we do so we take off the orange health there so even if we do like even if we hit him and crit him he's still gonna have one one 
pip of health left. I like that. It's very simple. You know what's going down. Let's do it. I'm into it. We've done it. We hit him. No crit. That's fine. We're still we're still having our combat phase here, you know. And, and you know that's 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 one of the things that I didn't really. Ah, uh, you know, I could be exaggerating here, but one thing that doesn't really jive with me vis-a-vis -vis XCOM 2, I love Enemy enemy Unknown, but XCOM 2, you know, I, I never really could get into it. It's, sometimes it, it throws a, a curveball at you, and it's like, hang on, why did that happen? And I don't feel, at least with with the time that I've spent here with, with Mutant Year Zero, I'm just going to call it Mutant. <laughs> its name is too long, dude. My, my time spent here, it seems, everything seems very easy to understand very straightforward I don't, I don't like that okay 50 percent chance let's do it all right look look we're gonna finish him off here with Borman. go in for it buddy he's done it okay fantastic that's slow-mo the the animation is is surprisingly good why do i say surprisingly well how many of these kind of like uh linear tactical rpgs do you see every year? This is this is a surprising amount of them, and look, not to belittle anyone's anyone's effort here, but they're usually not super polished, and this is it actually is. <laughs> it's it's smooth and and look, there's even like quality of life things going on here. Like you may have noticed a prompt on the screen during the enemy's turn. You can hold space to fast forward through all of it. And it doesn't really look janky. It just looks like you've hit fast forward through it. And it's, it's, it's nice. Just the little things, you know. It's, I don't know. Some, maybe I'm easy to please. Maybe the things that I require from video games are just very strange, you know. I think most people are like, mm, I want more guns. And I'm like, I kind of just want a smooth experience, you know. <laughs> That's a med bod. Uh, bod? <laughs> look at my med bod. A uh, med bot? See, it's going to be tough to get in there, I reckon. So... I, I think I want to focus on this guy up here, if we can. So, oh man, what are we going to do? Um, so we've taken out the bloke over here. We've taken out the shaman. So this is going to be much easier than it otherwise would have been. So I think we can slow play it uh, and just take our time, you know. So uh, one thing to keep in mind here is ducks with his crossbow. It's silent. You know, it's a good whip, but uh, you need to reload it after every shot so that's something to take into consideration here so um just to be clear so you know what's going on this is a two action system very very XCOM. uh move shoot you know or shoot and that'll end your turn more often than not um and reload or shoot you know move reload reload and shoot that kind of thing you know we've got overwatch uh so i'm gonna take this this time to reload okay uh and we'll move move somewhere as well uh, yeah, let's move her over here into full cover. You know, you'll be familiar with this stuff. You know, full cover, half cover. It's all there. Uh, maybe we'll throw a nade? Can we get away with that? Yeah, we can. We don't need to, but just so just show you what we got here. Just a little bit of fire action. So yeah, I mean, I don't want to overstate things here, but for me personally, just the, the fact that you're, that these are characters that are likable and charismatic and it's an rpg so the point here we go we can hold to fast forward um it's an rpg so you know you're meant to get attached to the characters and 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 have fun upgrading them and putting top hats on them <laughs> you may notice that selma is actually wearing a top hat uh it gives her like plus crit chance when she has high ground it's fantastic uh, okay, so Ducks is in trouble, but don't don't even trip about it because luckily we have some uh, med packs over here. So let me just grab my med pack, and anyone can use it, right? It's not gated off like it is in uh, in XCOM One, and, and I understand why it is. You know, I'm not I'm not saying like mm, this game is better because it doesn't gate off your med packs. I'm just <laughs> just making the uh, making the comparison here. You know, listen, probably over explaining myself. Don't even trip about it. Uh, but anyway, we're <laughs> Let's shimmy on over here to, to res ducks. Um, but yeah, just to get back to the point that, you know, that I was on before, I, I really like that these characters are not expendable. It just, it does a lot for me. I really appreciate it. 
So again, I don't, I don't know how how linear or otherwise the full game is going to be, and and how much replay value there will be there, you know, otherwise. Um, there's a lot of unknowns here. And I'm looking forward to finding some of this stuff out. Like, for example, will we be able to actually get more, uh, more mutants on our squad? And how fleshed out are their characters? I mean, these three blokes, <laughs> and lady bloke, um, are very fleshed out. And they're, I, they're all really cool characters. I like them. Um... You know, like, is it is it a, a squad size of four kind of thing? And then, you know, you, there's always the choice of, well, who do I bring on my team? I can add some replay, replay value. I kind of hope it is that kind of situation. Uh, okay, let's... Oh, listen, okay, so it's a med bot, and he's currently trying to heal up uh, the Shaman. We don't want that, because he's, in theory, going to call in reinforcements. So let's try and prioritize him. Oh, lucky. So you notice the med bot has armor. And it's all, it's all very simple. I think, I think armor is like a, oh god, shaman's up. <laughs> Why? Oh god, okay. All right. I let it, I let it happen. I, I'm talking too much, but you know, that's, that's what happens when you're excited about video games. You just can't shut up about them. Okay, so that guy's dead. I, I like that. I like that in an enemy. Um, oh, listen, you know what? What are, we, what are we getting from this? Like, not great chances to hit. You know, hang on, what's up there? The med bot. It's like 50%. I'm not not really into this. Um, we can jump up here. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that. It's potentially a bit of a risk. Uh, so Selma is unique in that she can jump up onto higher ground without requiring a ladder. I mean, once you upgrade her, you know. 75% chance to take him out in one shot. See, 50% chance to take that guy out in one shot. <laughs> I think, I think it's a moot point. I think his reinforcements are out and that's how it goes, you know. Uh, let's try and take the guy out in the middle. Why? Uh, well, this guy is closer to where I hope to get Borman up onto the platform. So, we're going to use him to take that guy out. Please. Oh, God, why? <laughs> That's okay, that's okay. Uh, we're going to use run and gun here, for the love of God. Get into that cover, please. My hoggy boy. Something else I'm not too sure about is the loot. Like, is the loot, uh, is the loot set, you know? Is it always the same loot? So, I've got to reload there. So, I've switched to another weapon. I've switched to the pipe gun. Just for this turn, just so we can get a shot off. 100% chance, my dog. Like, if we, if we have 100% chance... On anything else that's more important? Not really. Butchers, marauders. You know, I might leave the butchers alone for now because they're melee. They're going to take longer to get to us. So let's try and take out the marauder. Beautiful. I love that slow mo. It's so smooth. It's, it's real nice. I'm really into it. Uh, okay. Okay. Can we get up there? I mean, we can we can hover if we want. Is that going to furnish us with a greater... Well, we haven't got any ammo for, <laughs> ah, for one. So let's let's reload our situation. Not really into that. Not really into any of this. Uh, so look, what's the smart move here? Well, I'll tell you. We should really... We should really shimmy on back, you know? Let's fast forward to all this. No, don't, don't heal the boy! Oh, that was lucky. Yo, though. Please tell me that was a sprint. Yeah, okay, we're fine. I mean, if anyone's going to take the hits, I'd rather be Borman. Because he's my heavy boy, and as in, you know, I've given him armor to match. Okay, you know, look, we're fine. So, Borman, my dog. Uh, you know what? There's a home percent chance. Uh, let's, sw let's switch to the Gaper. Which is like a big old slug shot. Reload. And, uh, I really want to take out that. I think if we hit him, we knock him down, and it maybe it resets the healing process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh! We knocked him off the thing! Yo! That's, that's beautiful! That's, yeah. That's everything I could have dreamed of, and a little bit more. Oh, man. This is, like, this is where I'm... 
I shouldn't play these sort of games because I'm like, let's just leave Selma up there and let her take pot shots. But <laughs> that's that's she's in danger, my dog. Okay, um, where the Marauder's like right there. We can't hit him though, can we? Ugh, yeah, I feel like. All right, it's it's not going to be a great chance to hit, but it is a chance nonetheless. And if we do hit, it's now nah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go Overwatch instead. Overwatch. <laughs> okay. All right, don't worry about it. No, what did yo? Oh, that was that was lucky that she's in cover, but I did not mean to do that. Uh, let's switch to the other web here for the moment, and let's put her on Overwatch. So it's a it's a completely different style of game, you know. It just happens to have XCOM combat, but I guess the comparison kind of ends there because it's in XCOM, you know, it's very, uh, for lack of a better word, arcadey. I guess you know, it's like, hey, pop a pod, let's game the system, you know. Whereas this, it's it feels more like an RPG. So, like over even Overwatch, I feel like you you handle it differently in this game. Um. I'm going to med kit first, I think, and then shoot this guy in the face. <laughs> Don't even trip. It's fine. Okay. Uh, so we just got the two blokes left. We've got a marauder hanging around over there, thinking is all that and a bag of potato chips. That's fine. Um, oh, look, look, we might shimmy on around here. It's not ideal. Duck boy, do me proud. I mean, we got yeah, look, kind of like that. So he's got a skill skull splitter, guarantees the shooting unit to do critical damage, but lowers a chance to hit. I mean, if you've got like a 100% chance to hit, like I've seen it happen before, you've got 100% chance to hit, but like mathematically, it's like 125% chance. <laughs> and you use skull splitter, and it's still 100% chance. It's like it's a no brainer, you know, you use skull splitter, but uh, I don't like our chances here, but I'm gonna roll the dice. Yo! Even the misses, you know, just feel satisfying. I mean, the bullet trajectory, it doesn't do that thing where, <laughs> where it's like, hey, I'm going to point at you and the bullets go off at a 90 degree angle and still hits them anyway. <laughs> it doesn't do that, so kind of into that. Uh, okay, let's, while we're here, let's reload. Yes. You know what? Let's let's be smart. Let's be real smart about it. So let's hide so that we can't be hit at all. We'll wait for him to come to us, right? Yeah, see now we can flank him. I'm into that. And there's also there's a little bit of an element of like Metroidvania-esque stuff. So there's a I can't go into, into the map while I'm in combat, but there's a there's an area near the start where you have to avoid this enemy because he's just too tough. The game says, yo, he's too tough. It's like a tutorialized little... Tutorializing the tough boys. 25%? Um, 20... I just... I just... Oh! <laughs> Let's do it. Let us go. I'm into it. Uh, yeah, so you, you, you can't take him out. He's just too tough. So I imagine, like, there's an element to going back to that area once you've beefed up a bit. And, uh, showing him the business. So can we, can we use our bum rush skill? That's not what it's called. It's called hog rush, but it's essentially the same thing. Um, it uses one little bit of juice, so... I wonder if I can... Get on his level. And you jump down that big ledge, pig boy. Take him out. Yes. <laughs> That's it. Just the simple things, you know? It's the simple things in life that make you go, ooh. Yeah, so look, I'm not too concerned. We'll just sprint him up here. Don't even trip. What's he gonna do now? Like a big whole load of nothing. Uh, so I imagine we can just reload and, uh, pop him <laughs> while he's down. 
And a little, little gun flies off. That's, that's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. All right, there you go. So now we're out of combat. We've leveled up. You press F to regroup the squad. Uh, so why would you degroup them? Why would you split them up? to set up ambushes you know uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna leave it here you know we, we we could i could show you some more but um we're gonna finish up looting this area i'll show you what's in the crate and i'll leave it there but uh there are here we go this is a module that you can add to a, to a wep two additional critical damage 30 percent chance to knock back enemies my dog yeah uh you got to go back to the ark in order to do that maybe maybe we'll just go to the ark and I'll, I'll show you that um yeah, so there are there are situations where you want to want to attack this from from different angles, you know. Like you could go straight for the shaman, like we did. Uh, oh no, we didn't quite. We, we went for the guy over here, and then we went for the shaman. You could go straight for the shaman if you want, or take this guy out and go around the back and forget about the shaman and maybe not realize he's there, and then get ruffle stomped by the. By, by the reinforcements that he calls. You know how it goes. Uh, I think that's it. So let's check the crate. And the, the final mission before the demo ends. I'll be honest. I haven't, haven't been able to beat it. It's, it's a real tough mission. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Gladiator armor. Yeah. This is leading, leading me to believe that maybe the loot is not procedurally generated. You know. I think I, I always got the gladiator armor from that location. But that gives us two armor and plus two HP additional. Let's have a look at some some skills here. So what we got? We've got three points available. We can save them if we want. Grab Eagle Eye and Circuit Breaker later on, or we could spend it on movement boost. Permanently increases movement by two. <laughs> Yo. We're gonna do it. And he gets all intense. Look at him go. He's mutating as we speak. I'm I like that. Um Ooh, L the contortionist. Low cover works the same as high cover. That's genius. I want it. Not to mention she's looking fly as fuck in that top hat. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, all right. Let's just cut back to the arc real quick. All right. Welcome to the arc. We've got the uh, we've got Delta's fix pit, which was where we upgrade weapons and deconstruct. Weapons we don't want for crafting materials. We've got our Prips place, which is a bar, but it's used to... Well, I'll show you. What up, Prip? How you doing, buddy? Okay. So, whenever we find an artifact, and we're talking the likes of, like, an iPod. There's actually this really funny little little bit where you find uh, an iPod analog, I guess. Um, a mock iPod, and it's like, what is this, like a fruit tester? Yes, the ancients used it to test fruit, I don't understand. This whole thing, it's, it's cute. <laughs> so whenever you find a, a, a item like that, it converts to an artifact point, and it's like a, it's, uh, it's a squad level up, I guess. So grants a 20% discount to Iridius shop, so that's just basically the, uh, the store, weapons, armor, grenades, that kind of stuff. Uh, unlocks an extra grenade slot per crew member that's pretty cool adds one plus one fire damage to molotovs per turn that's like that's what i'm into you know let's grab the discount as well yeah that's good stuff we've got the elder which is basically story exposition kind of stuff uh and a radio shop and that's how it goes My favorite. we're gonna skip her dialogue uh but look oh look at her go she's she's fucking she's badass as is shit, my dog. Let's, let's grab some med kits because we're going to need them to do, especially in that last mission. Uh, you know, we got stuff. We got the uh, weapon sites. We can buy weapons. We can buy uh, armor. Let's buy some armor. Why not? <laughs> Why even not? Chem flare. This is cool. 25% aim bonus against lit enemies. Lit. Um, so I assume maybe this is like a grenade slot item and you throw it at an enemy and it, it ups your... your chance to hit which is pretty cool molotovs and smoke grenades it's all there it's all pretty good let's run into deltas real quick i'm look it's it's a shame to skip the dialogue because it's it's good it's good stuff it's got style and flair and pizzazz or something but uh i just want to get through this scope's not available what did i buy Oh no, that's right. We had we had some of this stuff. And armor is something I bought. Yeah, so we can upgrade our weapons through three tiers, and that uses uh, the, the the gun bits. 
gun bits or just like slot in stuff we find, attachments and whatnot. Throw in some uh, critical damage, additional crit damage. Why not? See him build your squad out. I like it. I'm into it. I want to see what that armor looks like though. I'm into that. Ooh. <laughs> Yo though. Yo. Oh, it's a... <laughs> It's a, it's a duck in, like, hockey armor. It's, it's so apt. <laughs> and, of course, we can use med packs to heal fully while we're here. And there we go. All right, guys, so that's it. That's, uh, that's Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden. Just a little chunk of it that they've given to, to press and whatever the hell I am. Ha! <laughs> Self-deprecation. All right. I really enjoyed it. Genuinely, I'm really excited to see, uh, what the, what the full release is like. And I'm invested in the story. You know, I'm invested in the characters. I want to find out where the mutants come from. Because there's a little bit of question as, like, where the hell did they come from? It's, there's mysteries here, and I'm into it. There's satellites falling from the sky. Why? What's going on? I don't know. <laughs> I think it comes out in about three weeks. I'll flash it up on the screen, the actual release date. It's like maybe the 1st of December or something. But anyway, guys, hey, let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of the game from what you've seen? What do you, what do you think of the concept of RPG meets tactical, very XCOM-style combat? You know, I'd be interested to see uh, how popular that idea is. Because I think it's it's something I didn't know I wanted. But I absolutely do now. I want more games like this. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Taste the game. Be excellent to each other. And I'll see you next time. Ricky Summer, out.